Hey again, it's Eugene Eric Kim of Faster Than 20. I'm here to do another staying strategic workout. We're gonna do both a question dumping workout and a question sense making workout today. It's been about 10 days since I last did the, the question sense making workout and usually when a lot of time has passed, I like to do another question dumping workout because my, uh, the things that are in my head are gonna be fresh, they're gonna be different. I will have thought about different things and it's a nice way, again, just to build a self-awareness about what I'm thinking about right now, give myself a little opportunity to focus. And then, because I've already gone through the sense-making process once before and I have a set of questions, to integrate the new thinking into the old thinking and see where I land. So that's what this, um, this workout is gonna be. I'm gonna do both question dumping and question sense-making, and we'll see what happens. It's been a while since I've looked at any of these questions and so usually when that happens I do a question dumping workout again just to see what's on my mind, see what's fresh. It's always good data. So I'm going to start off by creating a new worksheet. I'm not going to look at the previous questions. I'm just going to get right into the question brainstorming and here we go. Lots on my mind, clearly. I'm listing out questions pretty quickly. It's flowing pretty well. Five minutes are almost up. I think squeezing in the last uh, last question here. Ooh, fear questions. A lot of realization that I have a lot of fear in this process and I should probably work through some of that. So five minutes are up. First thing I wanna do is take yes, no questions and turn them into non yes, no questions. And now you can see, instead of doing the one, two, three scoring, I'm just gonna go straight into highlighting the questions with the appropriate color. That's gonna save me a step down the line. Once again, a lot of yellows, a few greens, just two reds. So I'm sorting them in order. And as usual, I'm gonna start with a green question. I'm going to start with the fear question. What's the worst that could happen? Answer is just flowing. It's obviously pretty clear to me what I'm afraid of. Interestingly enough, this is leading me to answer a red question. I think this is the first time I've done this in a question dumping. It's a natural analog to what's the worst that could happen, which is how will I pivot if this fails. And this is great because I need to think about it anyway. And just listing out my fears is obviously giving me ideas about pivoting. So it's really helpful. And that's getting me into a yellow question, which is also about pivoting, but something I feel a little bit more clear about. So unlike the previous two times I did question dumping, I'm going a little bit out of order just kind of flowing with what what is uh, what is strong in my mind right now. My 10 minutes for answering questions is almost up. Coming up with a lot of hypotheses here which could potentially lead to some experiments. And it looks like uh, this will the last, be the last question I get to answer before getting into sense making. So when you do a new question dumping, you basically just copy the questions and answers into the sense making document, same as before. I'm just copying it to the very end and I'm starting to move the questions into the appropriate sections. You see there was a duplicate question there, so I made the font size larger. 
it's just a signal. You don't have to do it, but it shows that, hey, this question was top of mind for me. It came up a couple of times. I'm seeing the need for a new section here, which is about packaging overall. And so I added a new section and I'm moving some of the questions there. So much of this sense-making process starts with moving things into the sections where it makes the most sense. And it's such a good process to actually formally organize things, even if it's not the perfect organization. It really helps reinforce clarity in your mind. So you can see I've been reordering, I've been adding some emojis, basically categorizing the questions. reframing the questions a little bit. This whole process of sense making takes time. It's something we're obviously playing this back at uh, six times the speed in this particular case. And so it takes a lot longer when I'm doing it in real time. And I'm actually pretty fast at sense making. So I imagine when most people do this exercise, it's not necessarily gonna be as fast as I'm doing it right now. But it's, it's part of the work. It's so helpful down the line. I think I'm just about finished. I have a few more questions that I need to move around, but it's gonna leave me plenty of time to add some more scores and start answering and exploring some of these questions even more. The reason for doing a question dumping as opposed to just doing it directly in the sense making document is it enables you to focus on whatever's fresh on your mind. So I got a chance to really list out whatever was in my head without being distracted by what I've thought about before, which was really nice. And again, it's good data to see if questions that I came up with are similar questions to what came up in the past. I, there were a couple of duplicates, but for the most part, these are new questions. And so whatever's been fresh obviously spurred some new thinking, which is great. So still sense making. Now I'm just categorizing the questions with emoji. Where are we now? Where do we want to go? How do we get there? Just trying to get a sense of what kind of questions I'm asking. So even though I said this is being played back a lot faster than it actually took, in reality, it only took about, you know, 15 minutes maybe to sort through. And so doing the organization, quote unquote, takes a lot of time, but it really doesn't. 15 minutes to get your thoughts organized, which is going to set you up down the line, update the scores, update priorities, categorize questions. That is 15 minutes well spent. And it's good enough here for me to continue answering questions. Once again, for a lot of these how might we questions, the natural thing is to come up with hypotheses and those hypotheses are things that you can convert into experiments. So I'm not even expecting to come up with answers here. What I'm doing is just listing out some possibilities which will help me think about potential 
paths forward. And so a new question is coming up for me here. These uh, questions that I've been adding and answering have to do with the organizational packaging of these workouts, which wasn't originally in scope for what I was thinking about. Like originally my focus for all of these strategic questions were about the collaboration gym offering, which is more individually focused, but it's hard to separate the two without thinking about both of the things. They're, they're, they're complements of each other. And so it's important to think about both. And so I've been adding and answering some of the questions here and having that clarity is going to help me think about what the individual offering is going to be. This is a perfect example right here. I had this question, how many organizational clients do I want? And that's important, both from the standpoint of where I'm investing my energy, but it's also important from the standpoint of like organizational clients take up time and I only have 40 hours a week. And so how do I want to spend those 40 hours if I have X number of organizational clients, I only have Y amount of time left over for the collaboration gym. So this is a great example of how just thinking through the organizational clients question or the organizational workouts is going to help me come up with constraints for my collaboration gym questions. So I'm just literally walking through the calculations sort of out loud here. See the answer slowed down a little bit. I'm I'm I can see myself thinking as I watch the the words appear. You can see I'm I'm calculating numbers. I'm using the Alfred tool on the Mac to help me quickly make calculations. Alfred is a great tool for all of you Mac users out there. So I have a number, but as I'm saying right here, it actually feels like it's too high. So I'm going to come up with a smaller number here. And there we go. I feel good about the number, so I made it larger and I changed the color of the question because I feel good about the possible answer. And I'm updating the certainty of the following question as well. This is a natural follow-up question to the previous two I was answering which is just my expectations about how long this is all going to take. These questions, as you'll probably see in the next workout, this naturally leads into starting to use other templates and tools to capture answers that are coming out of this. So a natural thing here. Oh, look, I'm, I'm actually creating it right here. Um, so I often, with the workouts I do with other people, I create this buckets document. And the buckets document is to basically take stuff that's coming out of your sense-making document and to put them in different buckets that'll be useful. In this case, I'm creating an action plan bucket, but you notice I also created a success spectrum bucket because the questions I was asking were naturally about what success and failure look like. And the process of answering those questions helped me figure out what those buckets might be. So I created a buckets document. You see, I didn't actually put anything in there, but I'm going to do that in my next workout. Okay. So another workout wrapped up and uh, that was another good one. I'm feeling good about where I am and I'm looking forward to diving into some more sense making next time. See you then.